Hello all and welcome to Stingray Tom's Florida and another Take 5 for Florida History. Today I'm continuing to cover Florida's official state symbols. So far I've discussed ones like the official bird, mammal, shell, and gem. This time it's Florida's state butterfly, or as I like to call them, flutterbys. The butterfly in question is Heliconius charathonia, commonly known as the zebra longwing, which is about the most descriptive name around. Unless you know that the origin of the word zebra comes from the Portuguese for wild horse, and not specifically those that are striped. Regardless, sticking with the common English meaning, the state's official butterfly is certainly zebra striped and has elongated wings. Zebra long wings are both beautifully striking in appearance and remarkably graceful. They typically fly gently from flower to flower and rest on them long enough for fans to genuinely enjoy their beauty. This makes them one of the most popular butterflies in the state. It's commonly seen throughout southern Florida and can be found in central and northern Florida fairly regularly, though it's not as cold-hardy as other butterflies. It's not really migratory, though they do move further north during the warmer months and are sometimes seen as far north as South Carolina. It's also native to Texas as well as Mexico, the West Indies, Central America, and much of South America. Its habitats include tropical and semi-tropical hammocks, grasslands, and forest edges, pretty much anywhere in the state where you can find wildflowers. Not surprisingly, it often shares its habitat in Florida with other butterflies, but there's one species in particular with which the zebra longwing finds itself in competition. Agraulus vanillae, which is shown here, shares a nearly identical range. Commonly known as the Gulf Fritillae, it has been seen to actually fight with zebra longwings, probably because their caterpillars feed on the same flowering plants. As to which native perennial vine this is, the Gulf Fritillie's other common name, passion butterfly, gives us the answer, the passion flower. While both butterflies like several different species of passion flower, the purple passion flower, Passiflora incarnata may be the most common throughout the South and is by and large considered to be as remarkable as the zebra longwing itself. It's both a wildflower and is cultivated for its fruit. By the way, most of these striking passion flower images are by Katie Pelisari, who is a marvelous photographer, especially of small animals and plants. I've provided a link to her blog and Instagram in the description. The purple passion flower's fruit is commonly called a maypop, due to the fact that its ripened, egg-shaped fruits may pop when stepped on. The name for the flower stems from Catholic missionaries in 16th century Brazil. They felt that the appearance of the flower was symbolic to the crucifixion of Jesus, also known as the Passion of Christ. For example, the spikes protruding from the center are symbolic of the crown of thorns, and in Spanish it was described as the flower of the five wounds. The plant thrives in well-drained soil in areas with a large amount of sunlight. They occur in thickets, disturbed areas, riverbanks, pastures, and along rail lines and roadsides. Basically, the passion flower isn't happy in a forest, but check out the edges of that forest and you'll probably find it. It's an aggressive vine native to the southeastern U.S., extending into the Midwest, including Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Passionflower vines will carpet the floor of thickets within days in the right conditions. As both bumblebees and ruby-throated hummingbirds look for nectar, the pollen-filled flower anthers brush the back of the bee or the face of the hummingbird, causing pollen to be transferred to the central sticky stigma. While the zebra longwing feeds and lays its eggs on the passion flower, it provides little help in pollination. The flowers bloom for about a day and the fruit develops in a couple of months. The passion flower has rather tasty fruits that are used for jams, jellies, and desserts. Of course, the juice is a favorite flavoring in drinks. 
They're such a fascinating plant and are so common in Florida, it's hard not to keep talking about them, but this is a video about the zebra longwing. Female zebra longwings lay their eggs on the passion flower plants and the caterpillars feed exclusively on the leaves. They even avoid the plant's defenses, the annoying fine hairs known as trichomes. They avoid them in two rather clever ways, by simply eating the tips or by covering the trichomes with silk. This behavior is one bit of evidence that points to the zebra longwing being more intelligent than many butterflies. Other behaviors done by the adults add to this hypothesis. For example, they typically gather together at night in groups to provide protection from predators and warmth. Groups of more than 50 have been seen roosting together and researchers have found that it's the same individuals returning to the same spot each night. It also appears that they observe a hierarchy with older individuals moving into the preferred spots. As they return to their nightly roost, studies have shown that they recognize other individuals by sight and smell. By the way, a group of butterflies is sometimes called a kaleidoscope or flutter. Interestingly enough, a group of zebras is considered by some to be a dazzle. So does that make a group of zebra longwings a dazzling kaleidoscope? In relation to the defense aspect of roosting in groups is that their adult diet gives them the ability to develop toxins which deter predators. And a large group gives many potential predators fair warning that this group of butterflies isn't a good meal. The toxins result from the zebra longwing's unusual diet. While they drink the nectar of flowers like most other butterflies, they also eat the pollen, something few butterflies do. It's the pollen that contributes to them being more distasteful. They are able to use the amino acids from pollen to synthesize cyanogenic glycosides that break down to produce hydrogen cyanide, which is also called prussic acid. Most everyone will understand the deadliness of cyanide, a colorless and extremely poisonous chemical. While the quantity produced is small, as it is in the almonds, apricots, apples, and peaches that you probably eat, it gives the zebra longwing a highly bitter flavor. Not that I've tried them. It's generally considered that its dramatic yellow and black zebra pattern provides a warning to potential predators. Not surprisingly, there are non-related butterflies who mimic the design of the zebra longwing in the hopes that they'll be left alone as well. The funny thing is, though, that the look of the zebra longwing has nothing to do at all with mating. In fact, the male longwing not only doesn't have to look his best to attract a mate, he doesn't even see the female when he chooses her as a mate. Mating routines throughout the animal kingdom range from the boring to the bizarre, and the zebra longwing's mating activities could be considered rather surprising. It starts with the chrysalis that contains the pupa, the third growth stage of the butterfly. It resembles an uninteresting brown, dead leaf. People see them all the time without ever noticing them, and probably the only thing that would ever find that chrysalis attractive is a male longwing. A chrysalis that contains a developing female pupa exudes a distinct scent that adult males are able to distinguish from the developing male pupa. Once a male locates a female chrysalis, he'll repeatedly visit and perch on top of it. It's not unusual to have multiple males gathering on a chrysalis in hopes to mate with her. When the female is close to emerging, the male will begin mating with the female, even though she's still in the chrysalis. During the several hours that the mating takes place, the female will also be slowly coming out of the chrysalis. Yet another thing occurs at the same time. The male produces his own distinctive scent, which he applies to his mate to repel other suitors. It's really fascinating to take a look at an animal most everyone takes for granted. The zebra longwing not only has a distinctive and beautiful appearance, its life is unusual, even among butterflies. It was chosen as the official state butterfly in 1996. I also created a video to cover the process that Florida follows to pick official symbols. You can see that here. Florida's choice of Heliconius cherithonia is unique in the country. 
No other state has chosen it so far, and it's a nice addition to Florida state symbols that includes the manatee, Florida panther, northern mockingbird, and the horse conch. This is the eighth part of my series on Florida state symbols. Please check out the rest. As for where to find zebra longlings in Florida, I pretty much have already given you the basics. Hammocks, grasslands, and forest edges. You'll more likely find them in abundance the further south you go in the state. I've seen lots of them in the Keys and around the Everglades especially. Anywhere there are hiking paths near open fields where wildflowers grow is potential habitat. Because passion flowers are favorites in Florida's botanical gardens, you can often see long wings there as well. Plus, if you live in Florida, you can have them in your yard. Just plant passion flowers and other nectar producing plants and you're probably good to go. Thank you for watching Stingray Tom's Florida and another of my videos. I've still got more from the series of state symbols to create, so look for those in the future. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Florida's tourism history. Stingray Tom's Florida, traveling through time around the Sunshine State.